Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Swell Pro Spry, the world's first mass produced consumer waterproof race drone. And we're going to get into it in this review. We're going to do an unboxing, inspection, and setup in this one. I'm also going to do some pool testing on it, see how waterproof this thing actually is, and also some ocean testing. I'm going to take it into the ocean, smash it through some waves, see what kind of footage we can get underwater. So let's get into the new Swell Pro waterproof race drone, the Spry. Okay, so first thing we need to do is take this thing out of the package here. It comes in this awesome case. It's got a really durable handle. They also make that larger splash drone for fishing. It has that detached mechanism on it. And it looks like they're following suit with the same type of case, kind of a slimline case here. It's got some pretty heavy duty zippers here. We'll just unzip it real quick. So I'm really liking how they're giving you a quality case because this is not a super cheap product and you want to make sure you protect your drone. So pop and open the top and check this out. Here it is. And it's also orange. Look how orange this is. So I'm just gonna tilt the camera down a little bit so we can get a nice bird's eye view of the case and everything in it. As you can see, we have these straps and stuff. I'm gonna take this stuff out of the top first. Got like a little uh, bungee. This is kind of a, like a little elastic pocket. And of course we can see the indents for the propellers and stuff. One, two, three sets of propellers. And we already have a set, as you can see, on the drone itself. Here's a tool bag. So we have a eight millimeter open end wrench. And then we have, this looks like a little fishing line attachment we can put on the bottom. If we look at the controller here, down here, we have these toggle switches. And to make them waterproof, they actually put this seal around them. So we get extra ones of those. And we also get this extra kind of diaphragm assembly. And that's on the top here, if you can see it here on the drone itself. It's got this little waterproof but breathable little material. That's so the barometer will work for the altitude hold. Anyway, that's just a little accessory kit for the tools. And let's get into the drone. So we've got elastic straps here. One, two, three, one crossing it here. The charger here. This is a a uh, lipo charger and let's see what this thing's all about so real simple we got our cable here and the cable just plugs into the end of the charger there and it looks like we can charge all the way up to 2 to 4s so we have the balance connector all the way up to 4s so kind of the same charger they include with all their swell pro products and to use that charger it looks like this is the little balance lead that we're going to be plugging into our battery here and then the balance charger here what I kind of like to see, you can see how it's got the just the leads here. When you're unplugging and plugging things, if you're tugging on the wires like this, it's gonna stress out this connection and you may eventually um, mess up the connection. So just a little nitpick, maybe they can uh, do something with their cables. And speaking of the batteries, let's take out some of these batteries. So I think there's one in here and then there's two on this side. So we're getting a total of four batteries with this kit. So right here, this is where we're gonna plug this cable in to charge it into the charger. That looks like the power off and on button, which actually the battery is going to completely be in the drone itself. So we have the sealed power button here. So we're going to see how that works in just a second. Still saying the Agile, they changed the name to the Spry. So they're still probably going to eventually be changing this on all their merchandise if they do go with the Spry name for sure. Two kind of slotted connectors for plugging into the drone. 11.4 volts. So it's a high voltage 3S. 2800 milliamp hour batteries and we're getting uh, four of these with this kit. So that's everything around the drone. Let's go ahead and take out the controller and look at this real fast before we dive into the drone itself. So here we go. This is supposed to be a waterproof controller. You can see that they've got this uh, silicone um, little seals here around the control sticks. Just really soft silicone. And I'm thinking that you see how those are popping up a little bit. There might be some pressure involved here. So if I unplug, this looks like the charging port. You can see there it is a micro USB charging port. And if we look at the front here where the sticks are, yeah, so you see how that's kind of releasing the pressure? So those went down. So it seems like if this thing, if the temperature is going to change or this thing's going to be on, these, these little seals might puff up. And that's actually a good indication if it's still sealed because you're supposed to be able to throw this thing in the water too. And it's got GPS in it, so that's pretty awesome. Just make sure that you close, of course, these ports and seal them up all the way before you put that in the water. These are like little screw-on seals for these toggle switches. So we do have a GPS, we have a circle flight and an Addy mode. And you know what you can do is you can actually put this um, a manual mode on this. So you can fly it in full manual or AKA acro mode 
and have it just like a regular race drone in full acro mode. And I've actually tried that real quick in the yard and that does work. You just change it in the um, software. You can get the actual connectivity Swell Pro software from the website. And uh, I'm not sure if it's available yet, but you can download that, plug it into your PC, and you can change the flight controller kind of like you would with Betaflight and a race drone. It's just its own proprietary uh, software that Swell Pro has. And you can go ahead and change um, a bunch of parameters. You can change, you can create like a geofence. Uh, you can change how high you want it to go on return to home, all kinds of stuff. You just have to plug it into your PC and you can um, change all those parameters. Near the toggles, we have a camera and a video button here. So long press or short press to uh, record and do pictures from the built-in camera, which we'll get to in just a second. This has a follow me mode. This, check this out, it's a F switch here. So you just hold down the button and this has got GPS in it. So wherever you have the controller, the drone will actually face the controller and be following you. So that's pretty cool. We've got power here, switch to change the channel. This is using 5.8 gigahertz FPV. And so we have a FPV screen, which we'll be turning on and checking out in just a second. So you can change that channel if you're the wrong channel. A little aluminum lanyard attachment. Checking out this toggle switch, we have normal and return to home. So the way this thing works, it's a momentary switch. So if you press it real quick, it's not gonna go to home, but you have to press and hold this, you'll hear a beep and then it will work its way home. If you wanna shut that off, return to home, you just hold this down until it stops returning to home. So that's a momentary switch. This one is a three-way switch. Looking over at the back, we have this nice sturdy aluminum bar. Everything's sealed, so there's no removable battery in here since this is waterproof. We're just gonna charge it through this micro USB connection here and make sure that's plugged so it's waterproof. So really cool controller. You can see these are the two antennas. And then we wonder, oh, how are they making these antennas waterproof? This is the 5.8 for the FPV. And then this is the 2.4 for the actual control of the drone. So we have these two antennas and I was wondering how the heck are they making these things waterproof? And if we actually just unscrew one, we can see that this thing's got like a little rubber grommet here. So I'm not sure how waterproof that's gonna be, especially for salt but it does look like they're making these things all sealed up. I'm not sure how it's gonna work with the antenna portion here. You can see that there's an antenna in there. So when the water comes down into this portion, hopefully it's gonna be able to still be waterproof, but I guess we'll be testing that out, see what happens there. Okay, so enough with the controller. Let's go ahead and pull out the drone here and see what this is all about. The main event here, here it is, the Swell Pro Spry aka the initially the agile I'm not really sure why they changed the name but here it is so this camera is actually going to record up to 4k and it can pivot in this lens this is all waterproof and as you can see it's tucked away in there and it can actually pivot up and down um, it's not going to be stabilized in any way except you can turn off and on electronic stabilization so all you can do with this camera is manually tilt it up and down like this with the controller. And that's actually something I forgot to mention. There's two more buttons here on the tops. You see that one there? So that's gonna pitch your camera down. You just hold it and that camera will go knee, go down and then will stay wherever you put it. And then this one here, you press it and the camera will go up. And keep in mind guys, this is a plastic initially. Uh, what Swell Pro has told me is they're changing this to glass because there was a little bit of distortion and refraction with the plastic one, but they redesigned this so for the final product it's going to be fully glass instead of pl plastic like this. These are all stainless steel screws and we have a couple to take off this and put on the new one if you wanted to if this one gets all scratched up. Taking a look at it from the top, all stainless steel screws again. Here's our motors, 1400 kV motors, 2206. Um, so that should give us plenty of power. And of course, it's all the motors are gonna be in the water, but all inside here is all waterproof. They have a seal between the motor and the actual craft. 6045 uh, dowel prop, um, two-bladed propellers here is what they're giving us. Here's our feet. So these are like rubber feet, hard rubber feet here. You can see how I'm kind of flexing them. This looks really durable. I would definitely just fly it probably over the water since it's waterproof. It'd be great for like boating, taking out boating and stuff since the controller's waterproof. There is a heat sink. So this is aluminum here on the bottom. And you can see how it has one screw hole and I think that's for that attachment I showed you that like aluminum plate, which you can put on here and uh, you can put some fishing line on there if you wanted to or something to do some fishing from it. Here's a Wi-Fi switch. So what this does is it turns off and on the Wi-Fi for adjusting the camera settings. 
and you can adjust the camera settings through a portable device. I'm gonna go into that real quick, just a second with my iPad and show you how that works after we check this thing out. Moving over to the back, we've got the antenna here. Now this does 2.4 gigahertz for control and does 5.8 for FPV, so you can also use any kind of racing goggles you wanted to. I'm probably gonna be using these ones here. So as long as you have a 5.8 gigahertz system, you can pick up that video and simultaneously it will display on the controller itself. I'm not sure if this is the 5.8 or the 2.4. It does look like a 5.8 short antenna. So um, I think that's where that one's kind of sticking out. Looks like probably internally somewhere is where the control antenna is gonna be. Working our way up to the top, check this out. This is a GPS race drone. So you have that fail safe ability when you get out of range or if you panic out, something happens, flip the switch or return to home and this thing will come back to you. That's the little GPS standoff right there to keep it up, kind of up away from the body. There's our power switch. So that power switch is pushing down on that. Remember that little power switch on the battery we saw when we checked out the battery? This is that little breathable diaphragm thing where it's not gonna really let water in at all, but it's going to let air kind of seep in and out. I'm not really not sure how that works. I think it has some kind of hydrophobic coating actually on this material. So it keeps water out, but it lets air kind of pass through. This is actually just a little hang ring since you don't wanna get any dirt or sand around the edges here. You don't wanna use this to actually pull it off. Uh, we'll do that right now actually, let me flip this switch. So this is like a little locking mechanism, pretty well done actually. And you can see that we wanna turn it so it's not locking the top anymore. So with these little tabs on the side, this is where you're gonna grip your fingers and pull this thing off. Now I should say that this thing got really tight, like if I left it on for a while, this top will get super tight and I actually couldn't um, take it off until I got like a plastic device and pushed up on one of these tabs and actually pushed, helped to push it off. So keep that in mind, your fingers will get really sore if you use just these tabs if it's been on for a while. So anyway, that pops off and we have this nice seal around the edges. You can see that it has a silicone seal there, a white silicone seal. And there is actually some silicone grease inside of this little crevice. And that's kind of why you want to use this little hanger. You wanna use this to keep it up and away from any dirt or sand and do not let this thing touch any dirty surface or else you're gonna mess up that seal. So after we get the top off, we can see the battery here and that's kind of where the battery button is pushing onto the battery. That's of course where we charge the battery. And it's got this little handle, which is kind of cool. So it is plugged in down here and if we pull up, you can see that it wants to pull up on this area. So we wanna put most of our pressure towards the back and then just pull this battery up. It just unplugs from those little slots. And once that battery's out, we can kind of see inside, that's where the connectors are plugging in. And this right here, this is a micro USB port into the flight controller. So just like you would on a race drone for beta flight, you plug this in, have the software downloaded from Swell Pro to configure the ground station. And you can change all the parameters like I was saying. You can enable manual mode, instead of that um, altitude hold mode if you wanted to just put it on that switch which i actually have already done right in the middle this is where we're going to put a micro sd card for the onboard recording this camera can record up to 4k default i believe it's at 2.7k and you can turn off and on that stabilization but you just slide your micro sd card in there for onboard high quality recording because as we all know the 5.8 fpv is not going to be very high quality it's what's used in race drones because you have such a low latency and so you have a fast reaction time but really you can't get any good high quality video from that so i'm glad that they actually put in a um onboard camera that can record in such high definition. Anyway guys, that's pretty much it for what you get in the box. It looks fantastic as long as everything's waterproof is the main thing and we're gonna be testing that. I'm going to boot this thing up right now and let's put it on the iPad and see how we can adjust those camera settings. Okay, so let's do it. So might as well show you how to plug in the battery again. So you take your battery, you wanna make sure that the uh, plugs are facing the back. Just put it straight down, and you wanna make sure you're not pushing the power button on the battery when you push it in. So we wanna seat the battery first. We're pushing down really hard until that battery is seated, but make sure you don't push that yet. Then we'll go ahead and put the cover on, and the way this cover works is you have a little notch in the back, so you wanna put that under the notch first, push it back, and then kinda of push down in the middle and the front. And you really wanna push down all around that seal just to make sure that thing is sealed good. Of course, before you put it on, make sure there's no dirt or rubbish in there. 
And then you just turn this lock here, just like so. So the round portion is over the door, locking that door down. So you're not gonna get any water in there. Then we'll go ahead and turn on the controller. And the way you do that is just by pushing this button and holding it until you see the screen. And you're gonna feel some vibration. If you feel the vibration and you let off the power right away, it seems like it might turn off. So you have to see that screen light up before you let off on the power from what I've found. Now we'll go ahead and turn on the drone itself. Just this one button here on the back. Just one quick press and you're gonna see that immediately you see how this screen is starting to flicker? And there we go. And we're gonna see this AHRS init on the screen. You can see it there, hopefully. There we go. So you're gonna, you're gonna wanna wait till that goes away. And of course on the screen we can see all of our OSD, just our regular like minimal OSD type of uh, information on the screen. We've got loads of information here. Everything you need to know as far as height, speed, battery voltage, time on. We've got, of course, our GPS modes is GPS. As you switch these, you're going to see different modes on the screen here. We've got our compass heading. We've got the amount of satellites here. You can see that it's got five in the house here. I believe it won't let you arm in GPS mode until you have at least six satellites. And you don't want to be flying this thing in the house anyway. It doesn't have any kind of optical flow or um, sonic sensors on the bottom. So don't fly this one in the house because if it gets triggered into return to home, that thing's just going to go up and hit your roof and it won't be very stable in the house. We'll start with the uh, up one on the right hand trigger. So I'm just going to push that and watch the FPV screen in the controller. You see how that thing's coming up? Hello. <laughs> anyway, that's all the way up. So it is a little bit higher than the horizon line is from what I've noticed. And then of course the other side, the longer you hold it, and if you let off, it'll stop of course. You can do small little movements or all the way. And it does a pretty good job at going all the way down, tad bit forward, but you can see that camera is facing down pretty darn good. So what we wanna do is we wanna get into the camera settings. Remember on the bottom here, it has this little Wi-Fi button here. So it's flashing green and that means that it's actually not on. So you just tap it once and you're gonna to start to see green and red flashing. Green and red flashing and that means this thing is ready to connect to one of your portable devices. And we need Swell Cam 2 is what we need. So you see that there, I downloaded the Swell Cam 2 app. Uh, and this will work on Android and Apple. First thing we need to do is we need to go into our Wi-Fi settings and we need to connect to that Wi-Fi output. Our Wi-Fi here. And what we're gonna look for is a population of Swell Pro. So see that there? That's the actual drone's Wi-Fi. So it's interesting while I'm doing this and connecting to the Swell Pro uh, device, the Wi-Fi device, check out what the controller is doing. It turned black on the screen and it's kind of telling you uh, what SSID it's spitting out there. You see how it says the Swell Pro 013 and also it's telling you what the password is. So just that zeros there and then check it out. It's connecting to, it's saying what it's connected to also. So you have an actual on-screen readout on the OSD of what it's doing and what it's connecting to. When I had connected my Android device, it did have an Android device down there. So pretty cool. At least you know what's going on on both ends. So of course, once that's connected to the Swell Pro there on our iPad, we'll go out of that and we'll go into our drones and we want to start that Swell Cam uh, application. Swell Cam 2 actually. There we go. So it's looking for the Wi-Fi camera and your device. They're communicating and boom, check that out. There we go. Okay, so here's what we got. So we have our menu on the left here. We've got our camera settings. We have our uh, video settings and then we have our general settings. Of course you can record and everything straight from your Wi-Fi device. But what Swell Pro is saying is you wanna press that button on the bottom again when you're flying and turn that off. You only wanna have this on when you're adjusting the camera settings. So you can see we're in video mode. Let's go into the video settings. So resolution and we can see that we've got 4K, 2.7K, 1080, uh, in all different kinds of frame rates. We got 1080 up to 120 uh, frames per second in 1080. And then in 2.7 and 4K, we only have 30 frames per second. We can go all the way down to 720p, 240 frames per second if we wanted to. So you could actually do some pretty cool slow motion. Electronic stability. So we can either turn that off or on on the camera. 
And I'm gonna just turn that on because of course we want some kind of dampening since there's no stability physically, mechanically on the camera. Maybe let's try that electronic stability and see how the footage looks. Record format, we can do movie or MPEG. And then video format, we can have PAL or NTSC. So those are the video camera settings. Now let's go and press this button up here, go into our photo settings and press the photo here. So we have photo size, 12 megs, 16.9 or four by three only. So 12 megs is our only option. Burst shooting off, three, five, or 10 photos per second. Interval shooting off, three to one minute. It'll just take a shot in those times. Uh, Time-lapse selfie off, two seconds or 10 seconds. It looks like if that disappears, just test the, touch the center of the screen and that'll come back. Let's go into our general settings and we can adjust our EV value. So our exposure value, if it's looking too washed out. Unfortunately, you can only adjust this I, you can't adjust it on the fly, obviously. You have to adjust it um, when it's sitting down like this. So it would have been nice if they can eventually get into more of like a DJI type of digital realm where you can adjust stuff on the fly with a controller. So still quite a bit of older tech here. We can do white balance. We do have um, preset, cloudy, sunny, all this kinds of stuff. I'm just gonna leave it in auto. Light frequency, 50, 60 to auto. Uh, distortion correction looks like it is grayed out can't do anything there we have metering global center or spot format SD card if we wanted to format about device it shows us our firmware version and we can also restore the factory settings so it'll wipe out whatever we set so you do have quite a bit of stuff you can do again swell pro does say turn off that Wi-Fi um, before you go and fly just so you don't have any kind of interference and the way you do that is you just flip it back over and we're just pressing that button again so it just is having a green flash now instead of green and red so that thing is ready to go i think that's pretty much in depth as i want to get on the table guys i hope you really enjoyed that initial um, setup don't forget you can fly this thing with fpv goggles because it is 5.8 gigahertz so any kind of stuff you're using to fly with your race drone or mini race drone you can use on this and save yourself some money and just use your existing goggles and stuff one more big thing was they have improved they have finally made this thing where if it goes upside down underwater remember if you've seen some of my other swell pro splash drone two and three videos um, that one had trouble flipping back up but this one if it flips upside down you can easily flip it back over by rearming it it'll actually stay armed while it's upside down and you can just give it some stick to the right and flip this thing over supposedly in the water and we're gonna test all that in the next flight test so stay tuned for those next ones guys again I'm gonna do some in the pool testing at my house first just to make sure it's gonna be able to be waterproof and flip over and stuff we can see it close up how it's working and then I'm gonna take it over to the ocean and we're gonna do full-on ocean flight smashing into some waves and really just see how this thing works if it stays waterproof you know the durability of it if any salt water gets in there. So don't forget guys, uh, links in the description of where you can get this guy and more information on it and some of the other products I'm using in this video. If you ever wanted to check out what I'm using here, I'll have those in the down in the description below as well. Anyways, let's get this thing in the water for the next couple of videos. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the water flight. Pokey? Hey, let me finish this up bud. Shh. Wanna go outside?